Today we're going to talk about the M24 Chaffee, which was a light tank and a good one for the period it came out, which actually shares its main armament with the Mitchell bomber. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. Now, it's named after a fellow called General Adner Chaffee. He was a cavalry general, but he was co first commander of the American Armoured Force. And that's how his name got attached to this tank. He was quite a character in his day, but um, no one's ever heard of him since. No mind. Anyway, that, that's how the name was applied to the tank. Some people actually say the name was a, na coined by the British. I think it was actually coined by the Americans themselves. Probably getting a bit fed up with us naming it their tanks for them. But uh, that's how it goes anyway. Now this is the, um, the tank, as I say, the M24. It's a very lightweight tank. It only weighs between 18 and 20 tonnes, depending on really whether you're American or British, I suppose. Um, and it, it is a very light tank, very really lightly armoured. Most of the armour's only about one inch thick, which is quite thin for a, a tank, but as you can see, fairly well sloped, and that's what makes the difference. It amounts to about two inches in the vertical, which is more or less acceptable, but uh, one inch a bit pathetic. But that's how it was done. It was um, powered by um, a Cadillac, a two Cadillac V8s in the back, but they were actually put in as a combined unit driving through a high dramatic, which is uh, their name for automatic gearbox, giving it eight forward speeds and one in reverse, which is quite neat, really. Um, it's got torsion bar suspension. It's actually the, only the second vehicle in the American hierarchy that has torsion bar suspension. The first was the M18 Hellcat. We haven't got one of those. And the second was the M24, which was actually the first tank fitted with the torsion bar suspension. It actually came in to replace the M3 and M5 light tanks, which had the old vertical volute suspension. And that's quite a thing in itself. But it gave a much smoother ride on this kind of suspension. And that was something that made quite a difference to the men inside. And that's the, uh, the, the tank itself. It has a crew of five men. That's a driver, a co-driver, because they both had controls to operate the tank. The co-driver was also the radio operator. And three men in the turret. Now, if they only had a four-man crew, which is fairly common in the, in the chaffee, the um, assistant driver, or the co-driver, doubled as the loader. He slid out of his seat at the front into the... Um, turret and became the loader for the 75 millimeter gun which is quite an achievement because the most of these tanks have bars and things in the way to stop you getting back too easily to the back bit but he did it from the drop the co-driver's seat to the loaders the other thing that you need to know about the chaffee is it doesn't have a turret basket so if it revolves if the turret revolves the floor doesn't each man's supposed to sit in a seat, which is carried round by the um, turret as it's traversed. And that's how it worked. But it means that the men have got to be in their seats. It's no good being standing on the ground because the turret goes round and you don't, which is a bit silly when you think about it. The Tank Museum is a registered charity and every purchase you make from our online shop directly supports our work. We ship worldwide and if you subscribe to our email list, we'll give you 10% off your next order. When you finish this video, go to tankmuseumshop.org and you'll find something you never knew you needed. Now a few of these vehicles, they entered service late 1944 mostly in service by 1945. The Americans had them at the Rhine crossing. The British had a few as well. This is a, marked up as a British vehicle um, with 7th Armoured Div. But they, they really weren't used very much. They came in so late that they didn't get a lot of use. They were used again in the Korean War, 
initially to fight the T-34, which was quite a thing. They're armed with a 75 millimeter gun, which is very good for a light tank, but it's actually the 75 millimeter from the um, Mitchell bomber anyway, that had a 75 in the nose. And this is what the gun is. It will take the same ammunition as the Sherman, but it's a, a, a different weapon, a lightweight weapon made of very thin armour compared with the gun in the 75, but a 75 in a light tank, which gave it quite a punch in its day. It really needed it as well, because up until then, they managed on a 37 millimetre gun, which was really a pea shooter by comparison. So it has that 75 millimetre gun with a coaxial 30 calibre brownie. It would have another 30 calibre in the front here if it, someone had nicked it. And it has a 50 calibre on top, which is mainly used for anti-aircraft work. But that's the whole tank. It's a welded construction, as all these um, later American tanks were, and really quite a neat little vehicle. There are two quite famous um, uses of them. One is by the French during their fighting in Indochina, what later became known as Vietnam. And they actually dismantled the 10 M24 and flew them into Den Bien Phu, where they had a, um, a plant or a, a, a depot. And they actually flew them in pieces, put them together and defended Den Bien Phu for a while, but they were wiped out in the end. The second um, use of them, which is also fairly well known, is the Norwegians of all people. The tank had been given to most European countries and a number of others in the Far East after the war. And the Norwegians decided to, if you like, upgrade this tank rather than get a new one because it was cheaper. They fitted it with a diesel engine, fitted it with a 90 millimeter gun and made a really good recce vehicle out of it. Um, I think they served until the late 90s or mid 90s anyway and, um, and did very well in there. Not that Norway, Norway was fighting anybody but they, were, they had the tanks to do it if they needed to. So that's really what you've got here. The gearbox as you can see is shown outside at the front. It's a standard American steering system for, for this sort of tank. You'll notice, again, it's driving on the front sprockets rather than the back. It's something that the Americans still hadn't quite caught up with. Nowadays, everything virtually is driven on the back sprocket, with the exception, I think, of the Israeli main battle tank. But otherwise, the Americans, up until this time, used the front sprocket, which they assumed was a, a better bet, I suppose. And they liked to have the gearbox near the driver, which is a help I guess if you happen to be uh, driving in that way so that is the M24 the Chaffee as it's known and um, a light tank of very very good appearance generally and quite a smooth runner top speed about 35 miles an hour um, quite good for a vehicle of its age it really did very well at the end of the war